Hello, I'm Jenny Montgomery. You may know me as a news anchor, but I'm here today to tell you how to reduce your risk of ever having cancer. Now, I know that sounds like a lofty goal, but I think if you'll give me a few minutes of your time, my colleagues and I can give you some useful and relevant information that may save your life. You already know some ways to prevent cancer, like not smoking. If you don't light up, you can reduce your risk of ever getting lung cancer. You also know it's important to use sunscreen by avoiding excess exposure to UVA and UVB rays from the sun and tanning beds. You can reduce your risk of skin cancer. Today, you'll have a chance to hear from an expert about how choices, choices that you make every day about nutrition, exercise, and lifestyle can reduce your risk of many different types of cancer, especially breast cancer. This program is brought to you by the Breast Cancer Prevention Coalition. The BCPC is an all-volunteer group whose lives have been touched by cancer, either as a patient, a survivor, caregiver, or having family members or friends who have had cancer. BCPC volunteers are fighting cancer in several ways. They help patients at the Georgia Health Sciences Cancer Center in Augusta by providing volunteers and mentors. In addition, they raise money for breast cancer research at GHSU's Cancer Research Center. Raising those research dollars is important to the BCPC, and the money raised stays here. Proceeds from a variety of fundraisers go straight to breast cancer research and clinical trials right here in Augusta. Only through research will we find a cure. Middle and high school students in the CSRA partner with the BCPC to raise funds for breast cancer research by participating in the Walk for the Cure in October. A student organization at each school is responsible for their school's Walk for the Cure, which includes registering students for the walk, collecting donations, distributing pink bracelets, promoting the walk, and conducting the walk in October. In addition to raising funds, these students also earn well-deserved community service hours. At the time this program was taped, 19 middle and high schools with over 18,000 students will be participating in the 2011 Walk for the Cure in October. And if you're watching this video as one of those volunteering school classes, give yourselves a big pat on the back right now. The Breast Cancer Prevention Coalition also hosts a website at bcpccsra.org where you'll find links to information about reducing the risk of ever having cancer. Our speaker is Dr. Robert Pendergrass, the Director of Adolescent Medicine at Georgia Health Sciences University. He's also an Associate Professor of Pediatrics at GHSU and has a private medical practice in North Augusta. Dr. Pendergrass recently published a book called Breast Cancer, Reduce Your Risk with Foods You Love. It's full of prevention guidelines that will, over time, move a woman out of the group called more likely to get breast cancer and into the group called not as likely to get breast cancer. And that is terrific news because it means anyone can do it. Dr. Pendergrass is here now to tell us how. Hello. I'm Dr. Robert Pendergrass, a pediatrician on the faculty of Georgia Health Sciences University and author of the book, Breast Cancer, Reduce Your Risk with Foods You Love. You may be wondering why a pediatrician wrote a book about preventing breast cancer. After all, kids don't get breast cancer, do they? You're right. Kids almost never get breast cancer. Teenagers almost never get breast cancer. But here's something you may not know. Your teenage years are one of the best opportunities you'll ever have to prevent breast cancer. In my pediatric medical practice, I spend a lot of time talking with teenagers about the choices they can make to stay healthy and prevent disease, reminding them that they're really truly in charge of their own health. That's right, the choices you make now make a big difference for the rest of your life. How you treat your body when you're young can pay off with good health many years from now. The foods you choose to eat, how often you get physical activity, and how well you control your body weight are all important for breast cancer prevention. What do we mean by breast cancer prevention anyway? 
Is it possible to be completely sure that you will never get this disease? To answer that question, I want you to think about another disease prevention strategy you all know about. The shots you receive at your doctor's office when you were a baby. Why do babies get all those shots? To prevent dangerous diseases like whooping cough, meningitis, chicken pox, measles, and tetanus. Do the vaccines work perfectly? No, not 100%. Even a child who has received all the required shots still has a small chance of getting sick. But children who get all the shots are way less likely to get sick than those who did not. And if you get through childhood without getting those diseases, we can say that you prevented them by getting the shots. The same is true with cancer prevention. If you practice the cancer prevention strategies that I'm going to tell you about, there's still a chance that you could get cancer but your chances are way less than someone who did not practice prevention. And if you get through life without getting breast cancer, we can say that you've prevented it by eating and living in the cancer-preventing ways. Let's talk about those strategies right now, since by now you must be wondering what they are. I'm going to break it down into five categories to keep it simple. Body weight, physical activity, breastfeeding, alcohol and other toxins, and food choices. What about body weight in breast cancer? Being overweight puts a woman at much higher risk of breast cancer, especially the kind of breast cancer which occurs after menopause when a woman is usually over 50 years old. So while the added risk of being heavy does not usually lead to cancer for many years, we know that it's much harder to get rid of extra pounds than to keep them off in the first place and being overweight as a kid makes it very likely that you'll be overweight as an adult. Now here's an important point. I see lots of kids in my office who are overweight and frustrated by the number of diet and exercise programs they've tried that have not worked well. For them, the weight has seemed to stay stuck despite their efforts. If that's been your experience, here are a few quick tips that may help. Remember the numbers five, two, one, and zero. Five stands for something to eat. That's five servings of fresh vegetables and fruit every day. When you fill up on those, there's not as much room for sweets and snacks. And those vegetables and fruits play a role in cancer prevention, as I'll tell you in a few minutes. Two stands for a maximum of two hours in front of a screen per day. That means when you add up all the time you spend in front of a television, computer, or video games, it should be no more than two hours. And the number one follows logically after the two because it stands for one hour of physical activity per day. One hour of walking, running, playing ball, biking, swimming, tennis, you name it. There's no prescription medicine as powerful as regular exercise. Then that final number, zero, what's that? It means zero sweet drinks per day. What? Does that mean you can never have a soda or sweet tea again? No, every once in a while, everyone's going to enjoy a drink with some sugar, but to prevent obesity or to get rid of extra pounds, it can't be every day. I hope those numbers five, two, one, and zero will be easy for you to remember and put into action, and that they can help you get to your goals of healthy body weight. If you've been working to reduce extra body weight but having trouble, ask your doctor for help. And if you're normal weight now, make a point to stay that way by limiting sugary sweet drinks and snacks and staying active. What about the second big area for breast cancer prevention, physical activity? Part of the reason exercise helps prevent cancer is that it makes normal body weight more likely. But physical activity reduces cancer risk regardless of body weight. Scientific studies are clear that regular exercise at all ages makes breast cancer less likely. Even for women who have already had a breast cancer diagnosis, regular exercise gives them a better outcome from the disease. So find something fun you like to do and get moving. As a pediatrician, I'm also very happy to be able to tell you that breastfeeding a baby makes a mother's breast cancer less likely. 
when you are finished with school and ready to have a family, make a commitment to breastfeed your babies. It is the best food for a baby, makes a big difference in the baby's health for many years, helps women lose their extra pregnancy weight, and definitely will make your chances of breast cancer less likely. And it's free. It's hard to think of anything that's free with more benefits than breastfeeding. And adding cancer prevention to that list makes it a powerful choice. Did you know that cancer often starts when the body is exposed to a chemical or toxic substance? That may not surprise you, but it might surprise you that some of those toxins are probably already in your house and people you know are consuming them every day. The first one on that list is alcohol. Of course, you know that drinking alcohol to the point of addiction or abuse is dangerous, but you probably did not know that even drinking moderately increases breast cancer risk. While there's very little harm to adults from occasional drinking in moderation, I encourage women to average even less than one drink per day to reduce breast cancer risk. In addition to alcohol, there are some other common toxic substances in our lives that may make breast cancer more likely, and I would like to help you avoid those. You've probably heard the word trans fats used about food ingredients. In fact, when you're shopping in the grocery, you may even find a label on a food package that announces, no trans fats. That's a good thing, because eating more trans fats seems to increase breast cancer risk. How do you know if you're getting trans fats in your food? Read the label, and if you see the word hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils, that food contains trans fats. This is commonly found in packaged baked goods like crackers and cookies and in artificial coffee creamer. My final tool for preventing breast cancer, the foods you choose. I'm guessing you would not be surprised to learn that eating a variety of fresh vegetables and fruits daily is a very important part of breast cancer prevention, especially the group of vegetables represented by broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, and collard greens. Together, these are called cruciferous vegetables, and they have a very special role in breast cancer prevention. Dark fruits and berries like blueberries and strawberries also have very powerful anti-cancer compounds that give these fruits their beautiful color and delicious flavor. I'd love for you to get to know and love fish like Alaskan salmon and sardines, one of my favorites. The healthy oils that are in these fish decrease inflammation in the body and help your immune system recognize and eliminate early cancers. And begin adding some whole soy foods into your diet every week. Early in your life, about the time of puberty, when the body starts developing breast tissue, is the best time to start adding soy to your diet as a way to prevent breast cancer much later in life. This is a powerful prevention strategy, so think outside the box and try some new foods such as soy milk, tofu, and edamame, which are those nice little green soybeans that you get with sushi sometimes. Also, the next time you're in the grocery, pick up a box of green tea bags and brew up some for a hot or cold drink at home. While there's so much more to say about food that you'd find in my book, that short introduction will go a long way for you. There you have it, a pretty simple list. But is it worth it? Maybe it sounds different from the way you and your family live. If it sounds too big to do it all at once, remember you can start small. Just make one change now, then make another change later, and get a friend, a sister, or your mother to make some changes with you, so that you have some support. You also may be happy to discover that living and eating this way gives you more energy, a better mood, and you'll just feel better all over. How much of a difference can this make? This last number may really surprise you. The evidence for this approach is so strong 
that we believe that over 73,000 cases of breast cancer every year in the U.S. alone could be prevented if all women would put these principles into place. Make a decision now that you're going to do everything you can to be in that group of women who might have heard the bad news of a cancer diagnosis but didn't because they had put these prevention principles into practice. One person at a time, you can make a big difference for a whole generation of women. That's really good news. With all the resources available today, we girls and women are empowered to make wise and healthy choices. What seems like an insignificant choice today may be the most important choice of your life. Early detection is vital, and with today's medical advancements, treatments are terrific, but prevention is the best of all. Breast cancer prevention, all disease prevention, is a fight for life. Take the time to fight for your life. My name is Auburn Salah Smith and I'm your reigning junior team Miss Palmetto State American Co-Ed. Cancer is no stranger to my family. My great aunt is a two-time breast cancer survivor and has been cancer free for 11 years. She has changed her lifestyle to reduce the risk of ever having cancer again. She eats nutritious foods, especially the ones Dr. Pendergrass recommends. She avoids alcohol and other toxins. She maintains a healthy weight and stays physically active, riding bicycles with her husband and grandchildren, and doing Pilates to build strength and flexibility. She tells everyone, and I do mean everyone, that prevention is so much easier than treatments, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. They are not only horrible to experience, but they all leave lasting negative effects on the body. Prevention only has positive effects, making your body stronger and improving your outlook. Research shows that my great aunt is right, eating nutritious foods, avoiding toxins, and staying physically active and maintaining a healthy weight will reduce your risk of ever having breast cancer, diabetes, heart disease. Start today and make one small change. Work to make it a permanent part of your life. And then add another change and another. Even if it takes a year or longer to make your lifestyle healthier, you are a winner. Remember that you're not perfect. You will miss a day of exercise. You will pig out sometimes. As long as you make healthy choices most of the time, you will be a winner.